now we're ready to deal with modes, but not in the way that you would learn in school. Um, in school, they would build upon the modes as different ways to um, understand theory, as different ways to to um, understand how you can play certain things over certain chords and things of that nature. The way we're going to look at it is this way. We're going to look at how can we take what we already know and use it in a different way. That simple. How can we use it in a different way? And if you think about it, when we get when I show you these modes, they do kind of present a different sound. And if you pay attention to the different sound that it presents, then it's going to lead you as you grow in improvisation and playing from your heart. It's going to lead you into some different ideas by literally playing. For example, right now, this is where I'm going to break it down to you. We're going to play our major scale just from different degrees, from different positions. The first degree in the key of C, where we're going to begin, is C to C, the major scale, right? Nothing is going to change with the group of notes that we're going to use. We're going to use the same notes for the second degree. And, you know, in school, they call these things different names. The second degree, I believe, is called the Dorian mode. And they have ways to identify this. The way we're going to identify this is we're just going to use the first degree, the second degree, the third degree, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And then back when we get to eight, we're back at what we already used because we're at the octave. So this is a very easy way to convert over to other scales, too, when you're playing by ear and you're playing from your soul. You know, I think about Perigian, Phrygian, Dorian, and all this other stuff, you know, names that, y that mean nothing to you <laughs> or probably mean nothing to you in the future, but something easy. I'm going to use the first degree. I'm going to start with the second degree. So in the key of C, if I'm using my first degree of my scale, it's literally again. Now, if I'm using my second degree, I'm going to play from D to D. And D to D is literally going to be D, E, F, G, A, B, C, I'm not going to stop on C because I'm on the second degree of the scale. So I must stop at D, which is going to be the octave of where I began. So we're going to literally start from low D, and we're going to work our way up to the middle D in which we use the octave key because that's its octave. We get re reach the same point again except it's just higher. So the second degree is going to sound like this. <laughs> See, it has a has a different sound, doesn't it? Now, everything that I just made up, I made up from using, I made up from using this this particular degree, because this degree made me feel different than this degree. Second degree made me feel like this. It gave me more of a minor type feel. It gave me more of a of, of that of that resistance type feel. It wasn't as free as the first one. And I'm not going to try to tell you how all of them feel, but that's the thing. It's the it's a difference. It's a difference, and you can use that when when making up things in the future when we get to that point. So we have to use these toys. We have to learn how to grab these toys now, so we can build upon them later. So literally, now the third position is going to be E to E. So E to E is going to be E F. G, 
A, B, C, D, E. So this is going to be the third degree of the key of C. And now I'm going to play it for you. <laughs> Okay, we're going to keep going. F to F. F, G, A, B, C. And don't forget, once we get past C, we have to use the octave key in, the, in this scale period. D, E, and then we're back to F. Sounds like this. <laughs> Now I'm going to do G to G, and no, I'm not going to give you the notes anymore now. By now, you should know the notes, so now I can just demonstrate. A to A. Which means this is our sixth degree, right? Because we're doing it in order with numbers. Seven, it's going to be B to B. And then we're back to our octave. So, one way you could practice this. You could start from each degree, ascending and descending, and, and bring them down like this. So we're going to end up doing the same thing for the other two keys that we have we have learned. And so now I'm going to kind of go through and outline those just in case, you know, they're a little bit um, shaky for you. So I can make sure we're on the same page and I'm going to demonstrate those again. So again, key of G. Um, we're going to change this one up a little bit. Once it starts getting too high, if you can keep going up, you're going to go up. But if you can't go up, we're going to take it down to still accomplish the same thing. So we're going to go G to G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Second degree. A to A in the key of G, uh, the key of G, so that means only thing different from C is we have an F sharp. So we had A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Okay, now you should know the notes from here, from the first chorus and from um, the major scales and the major pentatonic. So I'm just going to keep going now. B to B. Now I'm going to take the D lower if you need to. But those of you who can do the, uh, the octave, hey, do it. And now I'm going to take the octave lower from E to, to E to E. F sharp to F sharp. And then we're back. Okay. So now last, key of D, same thing. Remember, two flats, two sharps. 
C sharp, F sharp. We're playing the exact same notes as G, except we're going F sharp and C sharp. There's no C. There's going to be no F. We're going to play every degree, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then the octave. All right? So it's going to look like this. Okay, so that's what we're doing with modes right now. The goal is for you to practice those things. So we've been building. We've been building. You, you, have, you have a thing that I talked about with long tones to work on your tone and work on your sound and your endurance and building these muscles up. I've talked about spending five minutes in practice for that. Now I'm telling you spend five minutes in practice for your major scales, you know, because you want to get this under your belt now. Five more minutes, major pentatonics. So now you got 15 minutes of your practice time a day. And if you keep touching it, this stuff is going to be a thing of the past of just trying to remember how to do it. You're just going to be able to do it really well because you touch it so much and it's consistent. Sometimes we get on our instruments and we do other things and we have a good time, but we don't keep that foundation rolling. So if you take time to take that 15 minutes to knock this out, if you practice 30 minutes, now you got 15 minutes to work on the song. You got 15 minutes. If you have 45 minutes of time or an hour, you have all this other time to work on other things that you want to work on and perfect, and you still got in the necessities of what, what we were doing. Um, um, now, I may build upon your practice routine as we go, but I'm just giving you ideas of how to attack this thing in a smart way that allow you to reach your goals. So put it on the table. You know, you want to put first things first, priorities first into sounding good because without sounding good, a bunch of notes sound like nothing. Nothing sounds like soul if it's not clean and if it's not from your heart and you're just ready to rip it out. So you got to keep building from that first stage in course one and in course two right now, learning how to properly play with toys to let your imagination be begin to fly in the future. So let's get ready for the next video. Make sure you're practicing because you're going to need it for where we're going next. Thanks.